One of the biggest wealth transfers that has ever occurred in our country's history has just commenced and nobody knows it's happening. I wouldn't even know it's happening if I didn't read it in the Farmer's Almanac the other day. Amazing book. I was on page two and they start talking about how 24 trillion in farming assets, farmland, barns, equipment is going to transfer hands over the next 20 years. Now, why is this happening? The average age of the American farmer is over 60 now. Think about that. They're tired. They're retiring. They can no longer physically run their businesses. Sure, some of them can pass it on to their children in a trust. Not all of them have kids, or as I've been reading, a lot of their kids don't want to inherit their farms. So that farmland's gonna be for sale. And it's a lot better in the future for you and me if everyday people buy this farmland as opposed to corporations, Wall Street, and foreign entities. I've talked to some of the farmers in this area. They have told me some disconcerting information that some firms, some investment conglomerates are kind of quietly approaching these farmers. They show up with a check. And it's not that these small farmers want to sell out to corporations. You know, that doesn't sound great to them either. It's just that at the end of their farming careers, they're exhausted. Some of them have debt. They're just trying to figure out a way to ride out the rest of their exhausted lives, basically. What is up, guys? Welcome to another video. I hope that you guys are all doing good. In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit the wealth transfer, which is happening all across the world. Now, there are big things that are happening right now, and if you you know don't pay attention you might get left behind so without further ado guys let's get straight into today's video and don't forget to of course like comment and share because it helps us out in that glorious algorithm the algorithm which is so difficult to maneuver in okay let's press play so my mother was showing me that she opened the banana that she thinks that these are not real bananas we got it from the supermarket but when she opens it and she breaks it in half, it gets very tough and doesn't really break. And if when it pulls, it's like it's glue. The world is in half time. This is half time period before it all accelerates again and the second half of this game begins. I've seen a significant wealth transfer taking place, but money doesn't appear magically in your account or my account and you and I need to position ourselves for a win. Whatever country you're in, you need to find a job that is an essential skill, firstly, and double down on it. Sexy jobs are going to get cut. We do not need them. Platforms like this, they're not secure for income, and you need essential skills. Carpentry, electricians, diesel mechanics, engineers. For women, nurses, midwifery, teachers, educators, childcare workers, do not bother with the sexy jobs, like travel influencing, Lululemon, flight attendants. I mean, the other day I booked flights and we got more than half the plane to ourselves. And these firms are snatching up American farmland right underneath our noses. If you have ever wanted to farm, like if you've ever wanted to do this, I, this all happened in one year. You guys know who've been following me one year ago. This was just plain old farmland, rural land that I bought with a loan, which I will be breaking down more on this channel. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do with it. I didn't know who was going to build me a structure on it. I didn't, I've never gardened a day in my life. So if I can do this alone, I did this completely alone, obviously with a construction company, an Amish construction company that built the structure. If I can do this, please let that be inspiration for anybody watching this. If you've ever felt the call to start farming, to start gardening, to start growing some of your food, to go off the grid, to start homesteading, to start a compound for your family, to do any of those things, there has never been a better time to do it because that farmland is going to be for sale. Has anyone seen this happened to avocados? I bought these two, three weeks ago roughly in Sainsbury's and they are worth the full pack that you ripen at home. So they look, especially this one, it looks ripe, right? And I even checked this, like, I took the thing, split it in half and it went like this. Like, is that supposed to happen? I've never had this be cut, I mean, teared open in half. And I've never went red before, like a blood orange, actually. Now, I know a lot of you watching this are probably thinking to yourselves, that's great, Alex, where do I find this farmland? I'm glad you asked. I found my farmland on Zillow. I filtered for lot slash land, and I looked 20 minutes outside a city center. You are going to find uh, farming and rural land, usually 20 minutes outside of a city center. I found this land. I drove by. Okay. There's a lot to unpack there. I have to say the best investment 
is investing in your own farm in the future. What you want to do is to get off the grid because we've seen this in so many examples of influencers, not even influencers, I have to say creators and just people in general, people which go against the grain, you know, they get punished. So if you do not want to get punished and you do not want to rely so much on the grid, I would have to say the best thing to do or the best investment is to invest in a farm. The reason why is because if you have your own farm, then you can grow your own food. And of course, probably put out like solar panels and create your own electricity. And if you think of it, right, the whole reason why we go to work every day and why we work a nine to five is so that we can get, I guess, entertainment and food. So if you solve that equation, you don't have to work that nine to five. I mean, you can look at a lion out in the jungle, for instance, lions aren't working. When have you ever heard a lion saying, I got to go to work? It doesn't happen. So if you want to be ahead of the curve, I think the smartest thing to do is to invest in a farm right now. Um, get off those processed foods. I know that Bill Gates, is investing a lot in farming right now and that is because he wants to be able to control the supply chain when it comes to food because food is the most important thing we can't survive without food and water so he's trying to buy up a lot of land so he can own a lot of food and a lot of water which is going to be worth so much in the future because right now the upper and middle class are about to bottom out we need to make sure we stand in that. If you are in Australia and New Zealand, hold off on buying a roof over your head because when the digi things are put in place, the algorithms do better maths than us, will calculate how much you make versus how much you spend. And based on that, everyone will be given a score. I drive around and I see mobile homes, smart. This is a viable option, including those caravans and house shares with family or friends to avoid the lending system. Also, Australia and New Zealand, your SUPER is another type of TAX guised as help in your later years. Move it into a SMSF before it gets spent. America is becoming a sinking ship. No one wants to take pleasure in watching. And your first show is tomorrow to see who's the most equipped to steer this sinking ship to hopefully reclaim some of what you've lost. I very important got out of my Jeep on this land and walked around it because land has an energy to it. I don't care what anyone says. And I put in an offer. I ended up using a loan through farm credit, the farm credit network. I used it through farm credit East, which I'm happy to break down more about that on this channel. A lot of this farmland that is going to be for sale via these farmers might not make it to Zillow. And what I mean by that is these farmers are probably not on social media. They probably don't have profiles on Zillow. And a lot of them are too busy to even finagle all of this stuff online. They are just looking for somebody who is going to come along and offer them a solution. I have had countless people on my stub stack write in to me and say they have physically visited these farms talked to the farmers and next thing you know they're leasing 20 acres off the farmer for 500 dollars a month for 20 acres and uh there's a clause sometimes where the people will pay the farmer a payment for the rest of the farmer's life maybe it's 500 dollars a month and then once the farmer passes they get everything I'm sure everybody has been seeing these videos online and on TikTok here recently of people buying fruit and it being fake. Well, I just went to Whole Foods to buy some organic produce and I kid you not, I ended up with some fake fruit. Now, to say I was mad is an understatement. This is insane to me that things like this are even making its way onto the shelves of our grocery stores and companies are soliciting this as organic. Probably the most beneficial thing that I do in my day-to-day -day life is ask why and challenge my own assumptions. What I mean by that is what are the deeper reasons for things? And what that has revealed to me, especially with you know AI and now being an influencer and doing all the things that I do, I realized, a, most people don't do that. <laughs> they don't question things. They just want to, you know, exist and vibe and smooth things out and have a good time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what that means 
for those people that never question things is that they never look at their own assumptions. They never evaluate their own biases and they never unpack the things that they've never even thought about. So when I have conversations with people about AI all day long, every day, I get all kinds of comments that are various different versions of the same set of base assumptions. Especially when it comes to the money and the elites. They say, the elites will never allow this. Money will always be a thing. You'll always have a job. You'll need to work. You'll blah, 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 blah. No, you won't. No, you won't. Let me explain. AGI is what comes after AI. AI is what we have now. It's just, you know, neural networks and deep learning algorithms. But AGI, artificial general intelligence, is like a robot, a droid, data from Star Trek. It is defined by OpenAI as uh, something that can economically outpace most humans or something like that. I don't agree with that. My definition for it is a machine that can do anything that a human can do. Any intellectual task, any labor task, anything that a human can do. And by definition, if you have that machine, any jobs that it creates, it can do itself. So then you get into questions about universal basic income, right? You get into UBI. And you start talking about how we need UBI and we need to tax the robots and all this other stuff. But you, you're forgetting what that really means, what that really implies. Think about this from a, a serious perspective, AGI, anything that a human can do. That includes create an economy, create currency, go to war, produce children, build another AGI. So you really think that you're going to have a job? That's just one of the many, many creative arrangements I've heard of. Farmers are generally probably government distrusting people and are much more willing to strike a deal with you personally than they are to go through banks and loans and all of that. My advice to you would be this weekend, lovely October weekend, get in the car, whether it's five minutes from where you live or you have to drive two hours to get to this farmland. Um, I met a guy this summer who is running a farm that's like two and a half hours outside of New York City and he makes the drive. Drive to an area where there's gonna be farmland that you could see yourself farming and pull into these farms, shop at them, ask to meet the owners, ask to meet the managers, ask about what their plans are in the future for their land. You would be shocked and surprised to learn that a lot of these farmers may have thousands and thousands of acres and they are more than happy to rent 10 of them to you if that's all you need and trust me, you need one eighth of an acre to grow all the food your family could ever need. And I've gotten the firsthand experience this year to know that. And I'm going to be, again, covering all of that here for you guys. I took a four month hiatus. I am back um, just to give you a pan. This is the just gorgeous barn. I'm screaming. My neighbors can hear me that the Amish built me. And it is on the 6.74 acres of farmland that I ended up buying. Plastic never goes away, it just gets smaller, and we've now been polluting the entire earth with them for the past 70 plus years, living this disposable plastic American lifestyle. In the past few years, scientists have linked these microplastics to lots of really toxic impacts on your body, right? Including multiple different types of cancer, accelerated cognitive decline, and just like a generally disrupted gut microbiome, which lowers our immune response and, and causes lots of other bad things, right? Well, number one, Seafood. The amount of microplastics in the ocean has been doubling every six years, and all that ends up in a seafood, in clams, mussels, crab, very high amounts, and basically in every single fish they find. It's really terrible, and honestly, it's like one of the only things on this list that I don't have an easy swap for. You might just need to cut back on your consumption and try and avoid highly processed fish when you do eat seafood. Number two, salt. Unprocessed sea salt has lots of really high amounts of microplastics, and weirdly, conventional table salt in the United States actually had the lowest amounts of microplastics versus like Asian salts, right? Because ultimately it just gets more filtered. The closer the salt was to plastic manufacturing, the more plastic it had, okay? And we don't have a lot of plastic manufacturing here in the United States. Did also find quite a bit of microplastics in some of um, the European salts, specifically some of the Celtic salts. Also, I will note that Himalayan pink salt, due to the mining methods, was also high in microplastics. Weirdly, the best way to go is with really conventionally processed table salt. Here's some other really good brands that had low amounts. Number three, super processed conventional dairy. So the farther away a food is from its original source, um, the more it comes in contact with plastic. Super processed dairy products such as like powdered cheese and just 
conventional milk had lots more microplastics than dairy that was a lot closer to the source. So try and get dairy products that are far less processed. This would be like locally sourced organic milk if possible, as well as like raw cheese. I call this the six pillars of homesteading. One, grow your own food. Maintain an orchard, grow a garden, learn how to forage off the land, reduce your reliance on commercial produce. Two, raise beneficial creatures. Keep chickens for eggs, raise bees for honey. You can get cows for dairy, goats, rabbits, and sheep, whatever suits your lifestyle. Three, learn how to preserve your own food. Canning, dry storage, smokers. Four, build your own infrastructure, solar or wind power for energy. Propane backup, keep a well house for water. And I've cleared about not even two acres, like maybe an acre and a half. And um, I don't know if you can see out that way. I've left close to five acres of it wild, which has been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to anyone who told me to clear it. And I've learned so much about pollinators and local plants and native species that again, I'm gonna be covering here for you guys. But if you are feeling the call to do this, let this be your sign. The, the, the revolution, the land revolution has begun. She's 100% right. They say what? Insanity is repeating a certain thing over and over and expecting different results. So right now you have to take those incremental steps and you have to start looking at how do you break out? How do you get out of the matrix? No, I'm not going to be one of those guys. But of course you have to start thinking ahead. So yes, I do have to say that it's very important that you get in right now, you start investing and you start looking at the future because this is the future. They want you to be on social media. They want you to be hooked on the internet. That is what they want you to do. And if you can do the opposite to that, then of course you're going to be very successful.